Thank you, sir. Okay, hi. Could you send me the questions again? I lost <laughs> Just tell me close the workshop gone already. <laughs> email, oh. email me lah. Okay. I try. I have too many windows open at uh, on my desk, so. Maybe I have an email. Let me check. Sorry, uh, the format not good. I just said. Uh, I don't really know how this works. Uh, okay, anyway, I think we are the only two in the room, right? So it should be fine. <laughs> okay. But it's recording. <laughs> oh, it's recording. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like, cannot, cannot share screen. I think you have to wait for Jonathan to come in. No, it's not. I need to restart my browser in order to do that. But it's okay, I will not share. So it's okay. ah. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. So I, I, I just realized that I, I couldn't share screen because I need to restart my computer in order to do that. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do that? It's okay. No, 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 don't, don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll skip the slide because in the first place, it's not part of my script in initially. So. Okay. Okay. So area one. Okay, so <laughs> we had area one and area one has gone. So we got uh, John, John Lim, right? That, that's my colleague. I think it is, yes. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> Oh, well, it hasn't started yet, has it? It's only 2.45 here, one forty-five in Jakarta. Yeah, it's one more minute, actually. So. One more minute, and then the floodgates will open. Oh, that's how it works, is it? Okay. <laughs> well, I think it depends what's happening beforehand. So if I look at what's happening beforehand, is it lunch? No, it's not lunch. But some people are in a workshop. <coughs> Uh, Senbird workshop and um, two talks are finishing. One on data insights and the other one I just don't know what it's called. <laughs> the shell game called eventual consistency. I don't know what that's about. It's the main, it's the main talk I think and the main stage. Technical yeah it's kind of technical one yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Should pay more attention here. 
All right, let me see. Maybe you want to give it a, a minute or two for people to stream it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a hard stop? Do you have to finish at um, 2.10? Uh, 10, uh, 10 past 2 Jakarta, do you have to finish at that time or you can stay? I, 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 could, I, I could say, but uh, yeah. We'll see how. All right. So Liz is here. Hello. Hi, Liz. Why don't I say hi through the chat? <laughs> That's the only way we've got to. Uh, da, 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 hi, Liz. So quite a lot of Johns here, right? <laughs> John Lynn, John Wong, John Austin. Yeah. But you don't you don't have to be called John to join this 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 discussion. It's okay. Okay, Christian. Hello, Christian. Hi. <coughs> Imani, hello, Imani. Doesn't say uh, what job titles or what these uh, people do. Uh, so do feel free to, to share and introduce yourselves because I think this might be quite a, a small group. <clears throat> so anyway, should we get started because it's um, it's already at that time. Uh, so welcome everybody who's here. <laughs> um, Auth0 provides a platform to authenticate, authorize, well, identity management for applications, devices and users. OK, so it's a really interesting platform because it's aimed at, you know, um, a lot of social platforms and also for developers. So today on the call, we have um, John and Joseph. So this will be a partnership between Auth0 and one of the uh, the users or customers, Mind Valley. So what I'll do is the format of this session will be for about 20 minutes or so. Um, and the first part will be getting uh, Joseph and John to introduce themselves um, and what they're respective roles are, and then just discuss around the uh, the journey, if you like, the journey from from uh, being new to this through to um, selection, implementation, deployment, and getting some value, all right? So with that, what I'd like to do is uh, pass the, uh, the uh, uh, round table over to, to Joseph to, to kick this off. Please, Joseph. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan, uh, and a very good afternoon to everyone here. Um, so I'm I'm Joseph from Oak Zero. Um, just like how Jonathan has introduced us, uh, in case you don't know, so Oak Zero actually offers a, a very easy to implement and highly adaptable authentication and authorization platform. Um, so my role in Oak Zero. Um, is I'm responsible for our business in Indonesia, uh, and I'm actually based in Singapore. Um, so, so, so much um, um, about myself. Um, you know, I, I have the honor of having uh, one of our very long time part, uh, customer of Oak Zero, uh, John from My Valley. Uh, I'll, I'll let uh, John introduce himself. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm John. I'm the technical architect of uh, in Mind Valley. Um, for those who don't know, Mind Valley is in the ad tech space, and what our goal is is to kind of like further education and also personal growth. So we do that by uh, a lot of uh, online courses, and uh, we have community that's based around education as well. Um, prior to joining to Mind Valley, I work as a consultant for startups. So I help startups build their first MVP. And I've been doing that for almost 10 years before before joining my belly. Wow. Okay. Thanks, uh, thanks John for the for the introduction. So 
So being being with Alt Zero um, for a number of years now, um, it, you know, I I think it will be interesting to share with um, the audience here. You know, re re really, really, you know, what were the critical issues that uh, that you were facing back then that made you relook at uh, or even evaluate your your customer identity solution. Um, that was pretty long ago, many, many years ago, um, probably seven, maybe, seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I, I guess the landscape at the time is very different from now. So I'll give a little bit of context of what it is. So uh, at that time, Mind Valley was a multi-brand, multi-platform business. So we have a lot of business units, a lot of brands, uh, and we had the goal of unifying the users from all these brands because we have different apps, like uh, we have multiple iOS apps. We have some web applications and all of them were handling uh, identity management authentication all on their own. Uh, when we first started out, the problem was that, okay, how do we do uh, single sign-on? I guess that's the core problem that we were trying to solve. And we started with building our own in the beginning based off uh, the OAuth 2 standard, which at that time was pretty new. Uh, emerging, it, it really changed a lot uh, over the recent years, but it's a standard now that you know, everyone uses. Yes. Okay. So, so I mean, like, like you rightly put, um, well, things have evolved, and and you know, while your while your initial intent, um, you know, and challenges that you were facing, um, it, you know, may, maybe we can help help us understand how identity actually affects your business, um, you know, so that we have a better appreciation of the the, the business impact that you're you're, you're trying to address. So um, if you fast forward to now, uh, in currently Mind Valley, we have uh, a, single, a single source of truth for identity, right? So even though we do have many applications, uh, it comes and goes, you know, we grow the application, some applications. But uh, with that, uh, everyone logs in using the same uh, login provider. I mean, not same login provider, but same identity. So yep. meaning that if you did register yourself for one of our sub apps, like uh, example, we have a connections app, which is something like social network for education. And this also allows you to log into any part of the Mind Valley ecosystem and hit up APIs as well. Okay. So so that that makes your customer really easy in terms of uh, assessing your services, right? So identifying the user is also pretty uh crucial for us. Uh, so we do have a lot of landing pages. Uh, so now with, with a single, like a single sign provider, uh, we can actually check the session to see that, oh, okay, this user has already been locked in. And then we can, since we can identify the user, we can provide a bit more personalized contents whenever they land on you know, our landing pages or sales pages. And of course, obviously our content pages as well. So, so be, besides, besides the, you know, the, the, the intent of having one thing, a single identity for your customers so that you know your customers you, you know what other features and functions uh, in your view that will be crucial um in an identity assess management uh, solution like like all zero in this case uh, you know what, what what would you say will be the the other additional functionalities you'll be looking for uh, sorry there's a bit of noise outside so i hope you guys can hear me uh, right. So for us, for us, uh, what was core core to our business is that uh, we are very fast evolving, fast growing business. Uh, we churn out uh, like one or two new you know uh, applications a year, right? So we have ideas we're gonna churn out. Sometimes it could be three or four applications a year, and it's crucial that uh, all these applications can leverage on uh, whatever that we have built, like you know the APIs we have built. Uh, make sure that you know the users log in seamlessly whenever we want to enable just say uh, social login for example so there's something that was uh, not such a big project uh, due to the fact that it's already provided by you guys of zero but previously when we had we had to plan all of this in in the roadmap like you know what happens if you want to enable social login what happens if you want to enable enterprise login uh, so this I think these are the things that were very important to us and the second thing is that it uses open standards I think uh, the last thing that we want at that point of time, uh, OAuth two was not the default like the default configuration. Right? Uh, there are ways to do proprietary ways of logging in, 
And that was something that we do not want because uh, we op open standards will obviously uh, enable us to you know continue having uh, upgrades and continue like you know choosing the best technology that you want to implement at that point of time as we as we evolve. I see. Okay. You know. So you know, in in your entire journey as you started back then when 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 things weren't really the the, the market standard um and, and then evolving to where it is now you know what what would you say is your your ideal of the shelf customer identity solution in in, in your view what would be most ideal for an off-the-shelf solution i i would say that uh I think the key, the key process is that it helps, uh, helps remove the need for you to think about these things, uh, as you grow your business, which is one, and second, as you scale among. I mean, it depends whether you have multiple applications, whether or not you expand into multiple segments of products quickly, right? So for for us, uh, ideally, is that is something that you integrate in without needing to worry about scalability issues. Uh, one example would be whatever we are facing right now. So uh, right now, I think uh, as the business grows, uh, there will be need for authenticating to multiple APIs, for example. So all this is already taken care of uh, using a safe standard. So all our applications just uh, implement something that uh, passes the JWT token and you know and just authenticates the user. So that way, mobile applications can just hit multiple of our, our public, our, I mean, public as available for public APIs and kind of grab the information they need. Uh, that's one. Second is that uh, as you scale, then you start seeing things like, you know, uh, sometimes you get uh, attacks, uh, just say like, you know, try to test passwords and then you can see that, you know, the number of failed logins go up. So I think these are the things that are crucial that you might not think about then your own solution or when you first started but as you grow then uh, these are the things that become very important because you want to mitigate you know uh, just say bots creating accounts in your service or uh, bots trying to attack uh, denial service or bots trying to you know log in and try to figure out client credentials okay cool i i i i believe the audience will resonate with what you just shared i I think we live in a world now where, where, where you like your technology stack to be able to keep up with the ever, ever changing uh, business landscape. Um, and, and, you know, with the ability of a standard, reliable, secure um, identity access management uh, solution, which, which, uh, which is crucial in protecting the, the, the digital identity um, allows you to focus on on the more innovative aspect of your business um you know so so having said that you know having gone this this journey over the years um you know you know in terms of, of tangible results or benefits um before Oak Zero and after Oak Zero, you know what? What will you say are the the key results that that you have achieved today, post implementation? Mm, I, I guess the two, I mean the two kind of like tangible results would be one is that we don't really have a team dedicated to, uh, identity and authentication. So this this like this feature, this function has been. Uh, kind of decentralized to maybe a few individuals from each team, one for ops team, one from our front end team. So this, this I guess, is one of the benefits that uh, we don't really need to have something, a team to ded dedicated to maintaining and keeping up to date with the latest you know, security standards and stuff, because uh, this update comes automatically with the party service. Uh, the second would be that uh, our roadmap for you know implementing you know additional uh, features into this will be slightly easier. For example, if business do want to just you know, suddenly want to include MFA as you know, part of our increasing, you know, to increase our security, then we can do that pretty easily instead of needing to take uh, a whole team off for development resources to do it. Okay, cool. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad, um, you know, your journey um, 
Wave on Zero has uh, you know truly empowered your business to be able to stay agile and be able to adapt to to the to to the new requirements um, that you, that is rolling out. So you know, I, I John, I, I really thank you uh, you know for sharing um, your 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 journey uh, with us, and I I I strongly believe that that uh, your sharing uh, will benefit the, the audience that, uh, that is present, um, you know, uh, because um, dealing with identity is, is really the core of every uh, digital project or, or, or digital applications that, um, that, that the, the, the audience or the team uh, that could be building for themselves or for, for their clients. But I, I, I think, we, we live in an era where, where, where we want to make sure that whatever digital access or digital identity, uh, we make it really easy for our customers to be able to access us or to, to, to really use. Um, and, and it's not just easy, but it's also uh, making sure that it's highly secure. Because I, I, I think, John, you, you mentioned the, the, the aspect that you didn't have to do to worry, you, you kind of offloaded that um, on on Op Zero um, to take care of that, so that you then you know maintain a, a highly innovative team of developers in in keeping up with um, what your business requires. Thank you, John, for your time. Uh, Jonathan, um, are there any questions from? from the audience. Yeah, so the place to, to add questions as they occur is in the chat. So we have a few people coming and going. So different people are here picking up bits and pieces. I mean, if I can just summarize what I'm hearing here, just for the sake of the people who've joined, is that um, it's been quite a quite a long-term relationship with Mind Valley, but more to the point, uh, as Mind Valley has grown and added like three to four apps a year, the, it seems like an um, ability to keep up with the number of users that presumably come. Was there an idea, John, on how many users, what this scale looks like, and why Auth0 might be a more suitable solution than others that are out there? I guess it's, it also uh, comes down to the rate of growth that you're expecting. Right? So we are we were expecting a high rate of growth as uh, our business have been taking off. So we were we were having like you know, uh, I think our monthly activities were pretty low at that time, maybe in the tens of thousands. Uh, now going up with the hundreds of thousands. So I, as the thing scales, uh, is something that we need to take into account. Like what happens if because we are very launch based as well. So meaning that we whenever we do a launch, uh, that's where you keep, see a huge uptake of users. Right, and they will stay active for a period of time. So, there's if depending on your needs, uh, if this is something that you cannot control, uh, how the users grow, like you cannot predict, then something like third party service is, is a lot of a, a better choice because uh, we don't have to plan ahead with scalability, right? Okay, so that that seems like the the changing landscape of users. They're not using everything all the time. They're coming in on a programmatic basis. And also, like you were saying, is you have to deal with lots of different developers, right? Different development teams and, and keep them aligned without having many resources yourself. Uh, from the API, just talking about multiple APIs and the author, there might be some technical people here. Uh, what has been your understanding on that in terms of how this uh, solution helps with, with managing all those APIs or how you interface indeed with Auth0 through APIs and SDKs? I mean, how have you found it? Uh, if I'm not putting you on the spot, has, has the documentation been good? <laughs> I can ask that, right? I'm. Of course. <laughs> Let's see what he says. <laughs> yeah. Um, re regarding that, I think documentation is pretty. I mean, it's pretty straightforward because the way the way we authenticate our APIs is pretty standard, right? It uses the uh, OAuth two standard, and then it comes with a JWT token. So with that token, it's pretty easy to you know, authenticate. Uh, I, I guess, I guess if it's something out of the box, it's pretty easy to implement. So it gives you not much hassle, I guess. Um, there was, there was a point that because the standard evolved really quickly, 
we had to change our authentication layer a few times sometimes because when they implement you know a new new set of technologies we want to keep up to date as well so sometimes uh there is a need to kind of update the standards yeah okay Phew. i think that answer was okay it didn't sound too bad to me right <laughs> <laughs> i could see i could see joseph there saying mm, why, why is he asking this question we didn't prepare for this <laughs> nah but I, I believe uh, from a developer's point of view it's, and uh, from an end user's point of view, it's very important to have that documentation and that, that you know, as technical standards come in, it's important to have those, those things in place. Um, so in the chat window, uh, there's a question. Uh, perhaps you can read it yourselves. Can you see it? Uh, I guess the question is about testers, right? How to use Auth0 for testing. Mm. Yep. Um, so I think there needs to be like, I mean, it's quite a wide, wide topic, right? Like what do the testers test? Uh, for example, are you talking about an internal system where you want to give, you know, granular access control and therefore you want to scope them to specific uh, areas where we, they can test? Or do you mean in general where you test production, uh, and you you know automate your know, testing of production. Mm. So 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 what what were you testing when you you deployed it? Were you I, were you did you did you have a team of testers on your side? Uh, yes yes we do we do have a team of testers. Uh, but I mean we, because it's a public system most of it is public system. So our team of testers uh, test using their real accounts where we automate you know giving products there. I guess uh, the question is about internal systems, right? So um, for for internal systems, I I think it depends on whether or not you want to implement some sort of uh, scoping or role-based access control. So if you do have, you know, uh, I mean, Auth0 does provide that functionality where you can add roles and scopes. And then when you are given the authentication token, the JWT token, uh, it, also tells your application uh, what is the limits of that. When you do that, you can automate the testing process, uh, hitting you know hitting off zero to kind of like get the token and then you know assign specific roles to that. Uh, that can be done as well. And I guess we we do have our own automated suites to test as well. Okay, um, so testing an application which uses a lot of APIs. I guess you've answered that already. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's check. Uh, Sudeshna, is that okay? Yeah, good. Right. Thank you for the question. <laughs> yeah, I think he did. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So, looking at the time, we're coming to the uh, top of the session already, right? It's amazing how quickly it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, thanks for sharing the story. Um, I also hear part of the story is that uh, the emerging standards coming in. And also, as you get more users, all these automated bots and so forth. So I suppose you're you're forever going to be uh, uh, tested and tried on your external authentication. I mean, where where do you think the path is going forward for you at Mind Valley? Do you think it's going to be more the external side or more the the internal side? Uh, I think moving forward, right now we are we are very focused on B two C, and we are also having a focus on B two B. So I think this, these are the two main areas that you know provide uh, value to our company is to grow our B two C and B two B users, and our focus will mostly be on that. That's interesting, isn't it? Right, how it's going to B two B side now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another question. Um, yeah. So there's a question on internal only. Yeah, do we need to implement off as well? Um, I guess you when you mentioned machine to machine off, which means that uh, server to server communication. Um, that would depend. Uh, it's actually pretty similar to the previous uh, question. It would depend on uh, how secure your you know your ops internal architecture ops architecture is. That's one. Uh, second is that it depends on whether or not you prefer to have scoping uh, scoping of your functionality. So, for instance, like uh, do you want fine grain permission controls from just say uh, server A to server B, right? App, app A to app B. Do I want app A to only access maybe a subset of you know functionality from this API uh, service? So if that is the case, then machine to machine tokens are useful. However, if you 
if internally you can communicate securely, just say if you are using uh, Kubernetes clusters with a specific VPC, then if you believe that you know you want to give you know access to all of the APIs and all internal machines can be trusted, then there probably isn't a need to use you know the machine machine tokens in Pop Zero. You can just even do a simple you know just a key key token kind of thing. Mm. So that that's good. I saw Anshul just joined. So, so uh, just in the interest of time, I know it's a break coming up. If you can hang hang around, we could maybe take some more questions on the chat. Um, but I won't hold you any further. So, uh, Joseph, um, where would be a place that people could further interact with Auth Zero um, today? I think you have a booth, right? Yes, we do. So, um, so yeah. if there are, if there are further questions, um, you know, today. Uh, feel free to pop by the booth. Uh, uh, we're there. Um, um, fill up, fill up your particulars. We, we can also get back to you separately um, um, with regards to any other questions that you may have. Um, so, so re really, really, other than that, obviously, uh, my main website www.ozero.com. That's great, because I noticed a few people coming in. Maybe the last sessions were a bit late. I think everybody is also accessible through the chat as well, so yeah. you can contact all of us here. Yeah. So th thanks, gentlemen, uh, and uh, have a good afternoon. Thanks for everyone attending and the questions. The chat will be kept open uh, for the next however long people are here for. Okay. But for that, I will just formally close the roundtable. Thank you, and have a good afternoon. Thanks, Jonathan. Right. Thanks, Cheers, John. And Thanks, John. Thanks, Joseph. Bye.